Yeah, okay, see you tomorrow. Yes. <coughs> and my talk, my talk will be about effective interactions in colloidal suspensions, and I will focus on interactions between colloids and substrates, and uh, we'll try to answer the question how the uh, properties of, of the surfaces will affect the effective interactions between those surfaces and some model colors. And uh, it is, of course, well known that uh, effective interactions play a key role in understanding the behavior of colloidal suspensions, and uh, since the very interactions between colloids are attracted to the van der Waals attraction between uh, atoms forming uh, colloidal particles, uh, there are some means necessary to, uh, in order to stabilize uh, colloidal uh, suspensions. And there are two usual ways of stabilizing colloidal suspensions. One would be uh, charge stabilization, in which uh, uh, upon immersion in a polar solvent surface, uh, <coughs> uh, surface group, some of the surface groups uh, dissociate, and this gives rise to an effect to a uh, surface charge, and the likely charged colloids will repel each other and the remaining um, suspension remains stable. Another typical way of stabilizing colloidal suspension would be a steric stabilization in which uh, the surface of uh, a colloid is coated with a polymer layer and the entropy <coughs> cost associated with overlapping of polymer layers belonging to two different colloidal particles will give rise to a, a repulsion and hence it will also stabilize the suspension. Now, uh, it, is, uh, it is advantageous to, uh, for a theoretician to work with, uh, with uh, some models that are well defined. And uh, in the colloidal science, it, it, uh, it has become possible to uh, experimentally uh, <coughs> to uh, experimentally uh, realize uh, some uh, well-defined colloidal suspensions. And here is an example of a colloidal suspension, and uh, here is an equation of state as a function of the packing fraction of the colloid. And we see that uh, the, this colloidal suspension uh, mimics uh, very well a hard sphere uh, system, which is uh, one of the simplest possible models and it is quite well understood. And it is also uh, one of the key aspects is to keep down the point dispersity and uh, uh, so we see that the, the liquid branch, the fluid branch is very well described by the uh, an accurate equation of state for the hot spheres. However, of course, in the solid phase there is still, still some discrepancy between the theoretical uh, model and the and the experimental result, because uh, this residual point dispersity gives, uh, gives rise to some discrepancies between the monodispersed uh, colloidal crystal and the polydispersed colloidal crystal. Uh, now, it is also uh, well known, uh, and has been involved in, uh, in previous lectures, that uh, if we add to such a sterically stabilized colloidal suspension a metal macroparticles of smaller sizes, be the another colloidal particles of polymers, then there will be an effective attraction, uh, and this effective attraction interaction between two big colloidal particles uh, will also appear if the, all the bare interactions between uh, these particles are repulsed. And this is also well known uh, and already explained in the 50s uh, phenomenon and uh, it can be explained by invoking the concept of exuded volume. So if we have a big colloidal particle, then it will have, it will have uh, an exuded volume uh, that is for which it is forbidden for the smaller centers of the smaller spheres to enter. And then <coughs> uh, the overlap of this exuded volume, this is this uh, blue region, uh, will give rise to uh, more volume accessible to the smaller spheres, hence they will increase entropy, and uh, such a configuration of big colloidal particles will be preferable, and hence there is an effective attraction between big colloidal particles. And uh, these Japanese authors, Sakura and Zaba, they propose a very simple uh, theoretical uh, uh, a 
approach to this problem, so they relate the, the strength of this effective attractive potential to just to the volume, uh, uh, overlap volume of, to the uh, volume. Now, uh, it is also important to realize that the effective uh, attractive interaction will be uh, greater for the, uh, if we have a big particle wall configuration than the two big particles. So, uh, the reason for this is also can be understood in terms of geometrical considerations. So, uh, the excluded volume overlap between a big particle and a wall is larger than that between the two spheres, and hence there will be a stronger attraction between the big particle and the wall than that between two spheres. Now, how can we uh, evaluate this uh, effect, this uh, deficient interactions? So, in principle, the, the general idea is to consider two configurations of big uh, colder particles, and they are, of course, immersed in a sea of the smaller blue particles. So, we have to consider one configuration in which uh, the, this yellow big particle is at some, in, in about, and then we have to calculate the grand potential for such a situation, and then we have to calculate for a grand potential for the system in which this uh, yellow polar particle is brought at some distance r from a fixed object, and this fixed object here it is a wall, but it was only another, uh, another colloidal particle as well. And now, by calculating the difference of the grand potentials for these two configurations, we can calculate the effective interaction associated uh, with this effect. And I would I'd like to tell you about a possible theoretical uh, calculation, calculations of this effective interaction. And one of the roots is the density functional theory. And in this approach, we write the grand potential of the system as a functional of the set of the um, local densities. And uh, we have to consider a mixture. So we have a big particles, the density profile of the big particles, and the density profile of the small particles. And uh, uh, this grand potential can be uh, represented as a sum of uh, several contributions. One of them is this is the free energy contribution, and this is already I, I split it into the two parts. But, uh, that is the ideal part, that, which is known exactly, and there is an excess part, which is not known exactly in principle, and one has to make some approximations for this excess free energy uh, part. And of course, there is a part associated with the uh, uh, external potential and the chemical potential. Now, <laughs> if we employ the the classical density functional theory, then uh, this effective interaction can be described as a difference between, uh, between uh, one particular direct correlation functions in the bulk and at point R from the fixed object. And this difference has to be calculated at the uh, vanishing density of the big, smaller, uh, big uh, spheres. And within the grand, within the density functional theory, this uh, one direct one body direct relation function is related to the first functional derivative of the excess free energy. Now, of course, uh, there are many approximations for the excess free energy, and I will just uh, tell you about two approximations. One is the uh, one of the simplest one is the the low density limit. Functional. And this functional is, is uh, exactly the low density limit, of course. And only it's, uh, what is the advantage of this functional is that it only requires the knowledge of the uh, Meyer function, so that is the knowledge between the uh, very interactions between these colloids. Uh, and if we replace this uh, local density by bulk densities, we recover the Asakura of that approximation. Now, the best possible. Functional for the hard sphere mixture is the fundamental measure functional, and in this approach, one represents the excess free energy as an integral over the excess free energy density, and this uh, excess free energy density is a function of uh, uh, weighted densities, and the weighted densities can be scalar 
or vector or even tensors. Uh, what is one of the advantages of this, uh, uh, of this fundamental measure theory is that it was, from the beginning, it was uh, <coughs> uh, designed for, to describe a multi-component mixture of crowd spheres, and hence it is uh, quite easy to uh, implement this dilutive limit the regime necessary for calculating the effective interaction. Uh, so, uh, I would like to just uh, very briefly mention what are the approximations involved in, the, uh, in this uh, fundamental measure of functional. So, these white densities are just, uh, uh, they are calculated by convolutions of local densities with some white functions, and these white functions are of geometrical origin and they are associated with the geometry of the individual particles. Now, I will use some of the, one has to use some uh, approximate formula for density and energy density, and then you use some uh, recent formulation, uh, which is called white bell version of the fundamental measure theory. Now, uh, I'm interested in the influence of the substrate on the effective interaction between uh, the substrate and a yellow oil particle. And I will consider specifically first the situation when uh, a big colloidal particle approaches some uh, surface that has some geometrical property like an edge or a wedge. And in this geometry, there is, uh, for this geometry of, of the edge, there is a, an experimental uh, result that was uh, published in, by Dinsmore and collaborators, and they analyzed. By, by means of video microscopy, motion of big colloidal particles uh, immersed in a sea of smaller particles near an edge of a glass terrace. And in the direction perpendicular to the edge of the terrace, they uh, found a free energy barrier associated, uh, so there's a free energy barrier penalty associated with uh, crossing uh, the big colloidal particle, uh, crossing the, the edge. Now, uh, the the technique uh, is uh, quite simple, so they just uh, analyze the position of, of big polar particles and just by uh, measuring the number of times uh, a big particle visits a certain point R, uh, the, this effective interaction can be extracted. Now it is important to, uh, for the accurate determination of the effective interaction, it is important to determine uh, with a good accuracy the, the density profile of the smaller and blue uh, spheres. And just how good this theory is, uh, I would like to just show you these transparencies. So uh, uh, for this wedge geometry, uh, the density profile of the smaller spheres will be a uh, uh, function of two scalar, say z and x uh, uh, variables. And uh, so I will just, just show you some cuts of the density profiles so along this, along the core, the core of the wedge, and along some uh, direction like this. And this is a comparison of computer simulation, what we call a computer simulation, which are symbols, and the, the, the theory, this wide bell version of this functional theory is, is the solid line, and we see a very good agreement between these computer simulations and the theory. And this uh, uh, demonstrates how, how accurate this theory is for this quite demanding uh, situation. Now, and we can have, using this uh, approach of uh, in the previous slides, we can evaluate the, uh, the effective interaction between the big colloidal particle and uh, this geometrically structured substrate. And I will just show you uh, uh, some of the uh, contour of this uh, effective interaction. Uh, potential calculated along the line of the closest contact. This is the stick solid line, and uh, uh, we can measure this, this free energy value that is measured in uh, experiment. And now uh, we get some discrepancy between, uh, for this experimental realization of this model collaborators, we get some discrepancy between the theory and the experiment, but one has to uh, take into account the fact that in our approach, uh, this uh, this free energy barrier was measured along the line of the closest contact, whereas in experiment, the, the position of the big colloidal particle will slightly fluctuate uh, above, the, above the surface, so this will uh, uh, give 
regards to some uh, smaller uh, free energy barrier than that, uh, than that for, the, for the closest contact of configuration. And of course, this, uh, this effect uh, can also be understood by considering a very simple geometrical argument so that if we consider a big colloidal particle near a wall and we consider this overlap to the volume, uh, so for the configuration what is well removed from the edge, we see that there is a great larger overlap of the volumes than that for the particle that is at the corner uh, at the edge. And this gives rise to this free energy value. Now one can consider the, the, the reverse situation, that is, what will be, uh, how strong will be the effective interaction between a big sphere and a wedge. And in this case, we can expect that will be significantly stronger attraction between a, a effective attraction between a, a because the particle and a, and a such a wedge. And indeed, the, our calculations confirm this that there is a huge uh, additional attraction overlap for the planar uh, wall case. And this also can be explained very easily in terms of geometrical. Uh, in terms of analyzing the geometry of the system, and uh, uh, so we see that for the uh, configuration of the big particle near the core of the wedge, we have uh, additional overlaps from uh, another wall, so this gives us a significant uh, attraction, additional attraction. Now, uh, it has been possible to uh, experimentally to uh, construct to device uh, surfaces that are decorated by colloidal particles. And they are experimentally, this is uh, uh, an example of experimental realization of such a surface, and this surface can be used for an epitaxial growth of colloidal particles, uh, and they can form some crystals that are not uh, found uh, stable in the, in the bulb. And uh, uh, this is such, such an experimental realization, and one can ask the question, how strong will be an effective interaction between a colloidal particle and a, such a decorated patterned surface? And for this, I will also consider a very simple geometrical model. So that this is a flat su surface, and this surface is decorated with some templates, and they have the diameter of sigma t. That's their, uh, they consist of hemispheres. And of course I will uh, calculate the effective interaction between this big colloidal particle and the, and the substrate, and then this big colloidal particle is in the sea uh, of the smaller particles. It is clear that for the one configuration, if we have uh, only one uh, uh, template, this, the, the configuration in which the, the big particle, the particle is at the line of the closest contact here, the, will be the, the strongest effective attraction. And it's also because then we have the largest overlap of the two volumes. So now if we employ our theoretical techniques, we can, uh, uh, we can calculate this and confirm this. Uh, and this is a calculation done for the one, one template and we see that so this is this template, and this thick line denotes the global minimum of the deficient potential. So we see, uh, so this is the circle around this, and uh, so there is some extra attraction relative to the planar carbon wall, but not very strong. Now, if we consider uh, a surface that is made of several such spheres, we can consider uh, certain arrangements of these spheres. And uh, so for, for this configuration, if you consider uh, templates that are uh, twice as big as the smaller spheres, we see that the, the global minimum of the deficient potential will be, look, will be looking something like this. So there will be some uh, uh, circles around each template. Now, of course, it is possible to change the size of the template, and this will give rise to some uh, uh, new uh, new global minima of the depletion interaction, and they will be uh, stronger than that for the, significantly stronger than that for the, uh, for the previous case. So if we increase the size of this big 
uh, spherical particle, then we just notice that the, the global minimum of the, the effective potential will uh, consist of four points for this geometry, and uh, this uh, can be explained by, again, uh, by considering the fact that the big colder particle will benefit from overlaps, in this case from uh, overlap of these volumes with this template and with this template. So this will give rise to a new global minimum of the uh, depletion interaction. And of course, if we uh, increase the, the, the size of the template still, then the global minimum now will be here, but will be much stronger than that for the, uh, for the planar work. And because in this configuration, the overlap of the volume will be with many uh, template uh, hemispheres. And in this particular case, this, the global minimum will be more than triple for that, than that for the uh, planar part of the world. So we can see that uh, by smart uh, arrangements of, of templates, you can significantly uh, increase the attraction between the polar particle and the such a substrate. And now in the last part, Uh, so, the last part would be, uh, my part will be associated with the following experiment. So, again, these four collaborators, they considered the motion of uh, uh, big colloidal spheres inside a vessel. And in this case, they observed also that upon adding this depleting agent, the, uh, the, the big spheres, they prefer to, uh, to spend time mostly close to the, the surface of a vesicle. And now I can consider a question, what will be the difference if we consider uh, a substrate which is not a hard wall, but uh, is permeable to some of the components of the depleting agent. And here is a uh, theoretical uh, system that I considered. It's, uh, uh, so now I consider uh, an effective interaction between this big yellow uh, colloidal particle and a, and a semi-permeable membrane, and I assume the simplest possible uh, realization of such a uh, uh, membrane, which is, which is, uh, uh, it is highly ideal, idealized membrane of zero thickness, but it is not permeable to these red uh, colloidal particles, but is fully permeable to these blue ones. And in this case, of course, there will be an osmotic pressure associated with uh, such a situation, and, and uh, so that, that the the membrane divides the system into two, two compartments, and the compartment denoted by the, the Roman one will be in which only one of the components of the smallest piece are present, and the two, uh, where the two components present, and uh, there will be an osmotic pressure, it will be a difference between pressure on both sides of the membrane, and in the following considerations I will consider the grand canonical, uh, the grand canonical potential, uh, and I split it into the sum of the surface and the bulk uh, contribution. So the surface contribution will be proportional to the, uh, area, to the area of this uh, spherical vesicle, and uh, there are some bulk contributions as well. Now, if we consider such a system, uh, it is also advantageous to analyze uh, some rules that are associated that uh, can give us some insight into what, what is going on in the, the system. <coughs> And uh, the samples uh, can be uh, derived by analyzing the derivatives, uh, in this case, the derivative of the ground potential with respect to the radius of the uh, uh, vesicle. And using this functional theory, we can, uh, if we insert that expression for the ground potential into this equation and uh, consider an equilibrium situation, we arrive at the following sample that relates the contact value of the density of the non permeable species. Uh, with the osmotic pressure. So, uh, if there is some, uh, so for the theorists know it very well, that there is a sum rule for the hard wall that relates the contact value of the local density with the pressure of the wall. And in this case, for the idealized simple membrane, we have for the planar membrane that is of the radius of infinity, then these two terms drop out, that uh, the, the contact value of the density for part of the non permeable species will be. Uh, equal to the uh, osmotic pressure. 
Now, I would like to show you some examples of what is the difference between the effective interaction for the hand wall and for this semi-permeable uh, membrane system. So, uh, here are the calculations uh, uh, carried out for the constant platinum fraction of this uh, depleting agent, which is 0.4, but there is a uh, variation in the, in the concentration of, of the permeable species. So, if the permeable species, is, uh, its concentration is small, then this density, the, the effective interaction between our membrane and the uh, we call the particle would resemble that for the, for the non-permeable case. However, uh, as the, the concentration of the permeable species gets get larger, uh, we, we uh, can notice that there are significant dis discrepancies between, uh, between the, uh, these two uh, effective interactions. And for this case, we see that the interaction between the membrane and the colloid is almost zero. Whereas there is still, of course, a very strong uh, interaction between uh, colloid and hand. Now, uh, in another example of uh, how uh, big changes uh, can be um, is uh, on this slide, and I again consider a system in which this is one component fluid, but now I, I keep fixed the non-permeable component at this. A concentration, but a very concentration of the permeable one. And we see again that we, as we decrease osmotic pressure, we have uh, we lowered the effective attraction between the semi-permeable membrane and the coating. And now this can be uh, uh, this can be understood by analyzing the sun wound that I have previously derived from the Okay, I, I will be on. So. Uh, this can be uh, understood in, uh, by analyzing the samples. And the point is that uh, it has been shown in this paper that the contact value of the depletion potential, which is a good measure of the, how strong the depletion potential is, uh, is proportional to the packing fraction of the smaller spheres. However, <clears throat> the, the packing fraction of the smaller spheres is related to the pressure and that, that's the contact value of the density profile. And since uh, the osmotic pressure, as defined here, is almost, always lower than that for the non-permeable component, the effective attractive interaction between the colloid and the membrane must be uh, lower than that for the non-permeable case. And again, if we uh, talk, this can be so some of one uh, one way of arguing for this, but you can also. Uh, argue using some more intuitive argument. So, uh, if you remember the, this first cartoon, so uh, the, uh, one can uh, interpret this effective uh, attraction in terms of entropy, gain over entropy, associated with the more volume of going to the center of the small spheres. But, but another and equivalent interpretation of this effective attraction is that there is some uh, pressure unbalance. Uh, so that the uh, smaller particles, they uh, hit the surface of the big colloidal spheres, and of course, if there is an overlap of the exuded volume, they cannot, the, the smaller spheres cannot enter this space, so there will be some net attraction due to the pressure on particles. Now, if we apply this argument to analyze our semi-permeable membrane system, we will see that if we have this uh, blue uh, permeable species, it, will, uh, it can be present on both sides of the membrane, and then Hence, it cannot contribute to the, uh, to the, to the special unbalance that is the, the, the reason for the effective attraction. And for this reason, uh, the effective attraction between a membrane and the colloid has to be uh, smaller than that for the non membrane uh, wall. Uh, now, uh, the sum rule that uh, I derived you, I derived for you, it also contains some curvature dependent contributions. So uh, they say that these contributions uh, basically say that uh, the effective attraction for the big particle particular that is inside a vesicle will be stronger than that for the outside of the vesicle. And here is a, a, a example of the calculations for the 
effective interaction between a collagen particle and a vesicle inside a vesicle and outside of the vesicle of the same radius. So we see that there is some difference, and of course the contact value of this uh, effective interaction will. Uh, uh, so this is for the inside. It, it will uh, decrease, which means that the effective interaction will be stronger if there is a, a greater uh, curvature of a vessel. Uh, however, this effect is smaller uh, than that for the hard wall, uh, <coughs> and this brings me to good conclusions that uh, I hope that to convince you that uh, uh, the, the substrate plays a great role in uh, understanding the effective interaction between the colloidal and the, and the, and, and the substrate, and uh, it is first strongly affected by geometry, uh, in particular if we create some pattern of sub, uh, substrates, then uh, this effective interaction can be three times as strong as, them, as that for the non-permeable, uh, for the uh, plan of hard wall. And uh, uh, the other big point is uh, that the, uh, if we consider a semi-permeable membrane, then the effective attraction will be weaker than that for the non-permeable system, and this, is, this can be understood in terms of the pressure imbalance, uh, lower pressure imbalance. And now, the, uh, in order to achieve a greater, um, uh, stronger attraction between a colloidal particle and a vesicle, so there are only two possible choices. One possible choice is that, is that the, the local curvature of a vesicle must increase significantly, or another possibility is that, that uh, the osmotic pressure must be uh, significantly increased. And with this, uh, I would like to, this brings me to, 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 to my last slide of the talk, and I, I first would like to thank some of my collaborators, and these are a group from Stuttgart, Roland Roth and Siegfried Dietrich, Martin Schenk from Berlin, and Stefan Sikorski from Lublin, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Very large uh, kind of kind of 